is. It feels like Cartoon Network literally decided to take their foot and basically just kick me right in the ass! Now, the 2010s were ripe for reboots and reimaginings of old, somewhat irrelevant properties. Some were successful, but most weren't. Let's name some successful ones. There's... Uh... I, I mean, 21 Jump Street was pretty good. There's plenty to be more. But while this does apply to plenty of TV shows and movies, there are also a ton of video game series that got their time to shine once more. We had the Crash remakes, years after the franchise was presumed dead after a crappy reboot. Then came Spyro, who was also presumed dead after a crappy reboot. And suddenly every gaming franchise from the 90s and 2000s was like, Oh jeez man, is it safe to come back now? And in the 2010s, we got a reimagining of a classic gaming franchise that had long lost relevancy, in an attempt to reach out to a wider market focusing on kids. That gave the characters a slight redesign and dropped them into a new world with different characters and lore, and was released alongside a TV show. It was called Sonic Boom. Oh no, sorry, I mean it was called Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventure. Oh no, 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 sorry, my bad. It was called... Uh... <laughs> whatever, I can't think of anymore. You know it's Mega Man fully charged. Someone like... I know I said this in my Ghostly Adventures video, but why was this trend in particular so popular in the 2010s? I get that reworking how characters look can lead to a lot more eyes seeing your product, you know, it makes for a way more interesting Kotaku title. But most of the time this intrigue is short-lived when the hardcore fans realise that things were changed just enough to annoy them, and now nobody wants to give your show a chance. And of course this happened with the Blue Bomber. After years of a dry new Mega Man content that wasn't Smash Bros, fans were finally getting their first look at something brand new and it's this. Yeah, I can't blame them. I initially thought Capcom did this as a reaction to the spike in interest Mega Man was getting from the success of the Mighty No. 9 Kickstarter. Remember this thing and how it was going to be this massive, amazing continuation of the Mega Man legacy? Considering it had a planned CGI TV show too, made me feel Capcom wanted to try beat them to the punch, meaning this is more of a rush job than anything. But it turns out to just be a coincidence. The show was part of Capcom's broader roadmap to further expand the franchise to new audiences, which involved games, which eventually became Mega Man 11, a live-action movie, and the topic of today's video, Mega Man Fully Charged. Like I mentioned before, right off the bat this show was not seen in a very positive light, when all we knew about it was this single image of the titular character's redesign. It just screams someone taking a perfectly simple cartoon and trying to westernize it with so many unnecessary details. But I don't think it's fair to judge the show just based off that. It stars Aika Light. Aika? Aki? Akai? Just your regular robot boy living his best life in Silicon City, where robots and humans coexist in peace. He lives with his dad, Dr. Light, and human sister, Suna. But little does his father know that by day he might be a normal old schoolboy who is also a robot, but by night he turns into the protector and hero of Silicon City Mega Man. Until it's revealed that his dad knew the whole time. Spoilers, I guess. He's able to transform into Mega Man through the use of his friend Mega Mini, who jumps into his helmet and pilots it to help Aki with whatever problem he finds himself in. Yeah, this is a dumb idea. I think they wanted to try have a small, cute, marketable character that they could make into figures and plushes, but this really wasn't the way to go about it. Since he's stuck in Aki's head most of the time, he can't really interact with the outside world or talk to other characters. So most of the time he's on screen, it's either to give exposition or to just act like a reaction channel and give light comments on whatever is going on. Dr. Light acts basically the same to his original counterpart. At least from what I could tell, I don't know all the ins and outs of the Mega Man lore. He's still a scientist and the one who built Mega Man. The only thing I think that changed was how in the games he built the Robot Masters, or at least some of them. But in this show, he's just a supporter for the relations between humans and robots. I don't get why they decided to make Roll, I, I, I mean, Suna, a full-on human, but it doesn't really come up much to matter. She knows about Aki's double life and helps him out on missions occasionally, with her being the brains and using gadgets to help out. I actually kind of prefer this to Roll, at least how she was in the 80s cartoon with her signature weapon, a vacuum cleaner. Stay classy, 80s. Yeah, we're out of here. Whoa, where are you going? With you. Not a chance, fancy pants. I don't need any girl robots getting in my way. Again, in the 80s show, they really didn't know how to write for a girl, so she just spends most of the series going, Mega Man, Mega Man. <laughs> Shut the f up. It's not even my joke. The show just kind of picks and chooses what parts of the source material it wants to use. I think the worst offender of this is the original antagonist of the series, Dr. Wily. In the main canon, he's a crazy old scientist who was once friends with Dr. Light and took control of the Robot Masters to try to feed him, which eventually led to Rock wanting to be turned into Mega Man. But in this series, the main antagonist is a guy called Sergeant Breaker Knight who aims to destroy human and robot relations by making some robots go rogue and attack the humans, because during a great war he lost his arm to a robot. 
appropriate reasoning. I actually don't mind the shift in antagonists, although there's really nothing stopping him from just being Dr. Wily, but I think it's able to give each of the robot masters more independence. They don't always have to be controlled by another source, you know? Like, for example, Woodman is introduced as a bad guy, but at the end of the episode he realizes the error of his ways and goes back to being good. It makes for more interesting characters, not just enemy fodder. But what happened to Dr. Wily? Well, he's still here in spirit. Now instead of being a maniacal, crazed elderly man bent on world domination, he's now just a little ginger boy who's best friends with Mega Man. Awful. I'm gonna be saying this for a lot of this show, but literally nobody would have cared about this character if he didn't have any connection to the source material. Again, it's weird how this show just kind of picks and chooses whatever it wants to take. Saying that though, it can be cool to see how they interpret different parts of the original. Like Mega Man still has the ability to copy powers of whatever opponent he's facing, but in this show he also ends up copying their emotions. When this was first introduced, I thought it was just a lame idea for an episode with a predictable moral, but was surprised to see it actually come up again and again throughout the series. And at first Rush is just Aki's robot dog, but after a while gets up upgraded to be closer to the rush we see in the games. Yeah, this show actually has continuity. Other than the multi-parters, it never really tries to tell one continuous story, but stuff carries over in the sense that in one episode Mega Man could absorb, let's say, Fireman's ability and get really angry as a result. Then a dozen episodes later he wants to use it again and Mega Mini is like, yo, maybe you shouldn't, last time you kinda turned into a douche. And because he starts off being fairly new to the whole hero thing, it's actually quite fun to see him grow and become more powerful over the course of the season, or by finally being able to take on foes who defeated him previously. And it's not just Aki that gets stronger as the show goes on. It's also the writing. When it initially aired, I tried out a few episodes and dropped it just as quick as Cartoon Network from the schedule. It was boring, unfunny, Mega Mini was really annoying, and it just wasn't something worth watching. And I started this video thinking it would be basically that for an entire season. But surprisingly, it got a lot better. I think it succeeds at being an action show way more than being a slice of life comedy. Like, I get that when a show that Aki struggles to balance the best of both worlds. But whenever it turns into solely an action show, I'm not gonna lie, it gets kinda good. I know a lot of people were initially turned off by the art style, and I was right there too, but it definitely grew on me over the course of the show. It was originally supposed to be animated in 2D as we can see in this film Roman demo reel, but I don't really mind the switch to CGI. I like how all the robots have this almost cell shaded effect to make them look glossier compared to the humans, and the actual animation is really good by TV standards. It's also got some really great pixel animation moments with references to the games, and the music integrates a lot of chiptune with themes from the original. The only issue is the characters can't emote for their life. Honestly, my biggest issue isn't even an animation thing, it's more the art style. I can get behind a lot of these redesigns, I think Dr. Lights is fine, Mega Man's grew on me after a while, but most of the robot masters look horrible now, especially Cutman and Woodman, it's just… no. Their voices are also kind of a mixed bag, but that sort of applies to everyone in the show. Excuse me, sir, but the buffet is closed! I'm pretty sure it's all I can eat, and for me, that's tons. And remember how in my Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures video I complained about how boring and blocky the world I lived in looked? Well, somehow this manages to look even worse. I get it's like an advanced society, but there are more colors than just blue and gray out there. They're protecting something far more important. Unity. Look at what we built because of it. The season finale really does a good job at tying all these good aspects of the show together. It really did get better over time. We get to see Mega Man and his family take on all the robot masters at once in a pretty cool action scene. And it ends with a major reveal that I'm not going to spoil since I feel people should go watch it for themselves. Who am I kidding? Nobody's going to watch this. It ends with the big reveal that Sergeant Breaker Knight's sidekick was actually Aki's missing brother the whole time. Nam Nam Man Man again? Basically the proto man in the show. I can't wait to see how this develops in the next season. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sadly, the show never managed to find its footing with low ratings and negative reviews, and was quickly cancelled almost as soon as it started, despite a second season being planned and apparently a far way through the concepting stages. It wasn't solely due to ratings, there was also some disagreements between the studio and the people financing the show, but the ratings surely didn't help. And it's a shame because I think behind the bizarre take on this pre-existing IP, there's a fairly decent show here that I think more people would have been a lot more open to if it weren't connected with the Mega Man brand. That is, if they could even stay awake to watch it. Cartoon Network sure seems to like it when their brand new shows fail or else they wouldn't keep airing them in the middle of the morning. Apparently it was meant to originally air on Disney XD but then they backed out due to their universal backlash of the teaser image. Which I can understand on their part somewhat, but why change the design at all if it's not- <laughs> if it did nothing but hinder its reputation? Overall, while not the best thing in the world, I think Mega Man Fully Charged is an alright show that you should go and watch for yourself. It's definitely the best Mega Man show. Which I know isn't saying much, but it's alright, trust me. You can help me become a ruler of the world! Not you, Wily. I shall rule the planet!